Hi students, in this class we shall be discussing geometric mean from the chapter measures of central tendencies for CSEMA foundation statistics. Okay, so what is geometric mean? What is geometric mean? The geometric mean of n positive integers, see for n positive integers it is defined as the nth root of product of all the observations. Suppose if you have say 5 observations a, b, c, d and e then to find the gm, find the geometric mean what we do? We multiply all the observations that is a into b into c into d into e. Okay. So, we multiply all the observations and then take the nth root. Here there are 5 observations. Here n is equal to 5. Okay, n is equal to 5. So, we take the 5th root and that is the value and then calculate this expression. What we get? We will be getting the geometric mean of a, b, c, d and e. Okay. So, in general, nth root of a product of all observations can be given as this way. If x1, x2, x3 up to xn all the values being positive, see it is a condition that all positive values are given to you. Then the geometric mean denoted by gm or g is given as the product of observations and then we take the nth root raised to 1 by n. Okay. So, this is the definition you can note this down this is the definition or formula to find the gm of n observations x1 x2 x3 up to xn now in case if we are given continuous or grouped frequency distribution in case if we are given grouped frequency distribution then we can have we it is the same method okay here also it is the same method so, x1 is repeating f1 number of times. Okay, suppose uh, x1 is repeating f1 number of times, x2 is repeating f2 number of times, same way xn is repeating fn number of times. So, x has to be multiplied f1 times. So, how can we do this? We can do it like x1 raised to f1, x1 to the power of f1, same way x2 has to be multiplied f2 times, that is x2 the whole raised to f2 okay so this is xn is multiplied fn times so we have xn raised to fn now we need to multiply all of them this is the individual products individual product of repeating observations okay so this is xi raised to fi now we need to multiply all these together that is x1 raised to fn x2 raised to f2 then xn raised to fn we need to multiply all of them together and raise to raise to capital n where total number of observations will be sigma fi okay that's it so this is the formula this is the formula for individual observations this is the formula for grouped observations this is for individual observations And this is for grouped observations, okay, but discrete, okay. Now, let us understand some properties of geometric mean, okay. We shall understand each property in detail. First property is logarithm of G for a set of observations is the arithmetic mean of the logarithm of observations. Seems to be complicating, right. Say, for example, if we have uh, n observations x1, x2, x3 up to xn, right. So, we know that g is defined as, g is defined as x1 into x2 into up to xn, the whole raise to 1 by n, correct. Now, when you take log on both sides, okay. When you take log on both sides, log of g will be equal to, see we can write this properties of logarithm, we can have 1 by n comes in the front, okay. So, 1 by n into log of x1 into x2 into up to xn, 
okay now we know that there is another property of log that log of a into b is equal to log of a plus log of b okay so that property will be applied everywhere so the multiplication becomes addition so it becomes 1 by n into log of x 1 plus log of x 2 plus up to log of x n okay so that is why the formula becomes log g equal to log of x1 plus log of x2 plus 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 up to log of xn divided by n and that is what we have here okay so it says that logarithm of geometric mean of a set of observations is equal to the arithmetic mean see sum of logs divided by number of elements right so that is it becomes the arithmetic mean of the log of observations. So, first we find the log and then we find the arithmetic mean what we get is the log or log of g. Okay. So, log of g will be equal to the arithmetic mean of log of observations. Okay. Next property, next property says that if all the observations are uh, constants that is say k which is positive then the geometric mean of the observations is also k say for example if all the observations are 3 3 3 okay if there are uh, n observations if or say there are 10 observations okay there are 10 observations okay 10 times 10 observations okay then what will be the gm of all these observations so it be, it will become see here n is equal to 10 each observation is this so first we multiply 3 10 times 3 into 3 into 3 10 times correct 10 times and then what we do is take the 10th root okay so, what happens here is it becomes 3 raised to 10. When you multiply 3 10 times, it becomes 3 raised to 10, the whole raised to 1 by 10 and it becomes equal to 3. So, the geometric mean of all the constant observations, so these are all constants. Okay. If the way all variables are equal to a particular constant, say k, then we say that the gm of observations is also k. Okay. If all the observations are 3, then the gm of the observations will be 3. Next property, property 3, the geometric mean of product of two variables is the product of their geometric means. It says that if you can have uh, say x is a set of values and y is another set of values, the geometric mean of uh, gm of x into y, the gm of x into y will be equal to gm of x into gm of y okay so if you take x y as some other variable say z then z is equal to x into y so that is gm of z will be equal to gm of x into y that becomes gm of x into gm of y okay so that's it next property property 4 is that the same thing for division okay if we have x by y and we need to find gm of x by y that will be equal to gm of x, gm of x divided by gm of y. Okay, very simple. Property 5. If any one observation is negative, then gm is undefined. If any one observation is negative, then gm is undefined. That is because, because the root of a negative number is not defined. That is the reason okay now property 6 if one observation is 0 then also geometric mean is also 0 then also the geometric mean becomes 0 okay if one observation is 0 the geometric mean becomes 0 let us see that say 2 4 6 and then 0 okay what is the geometric mean of these observations there are four observations n is equal to 4 okay so, geometric mean of all these observations will be 0 into 2 into 4 into 6. 
the whole raised to 1 by 4. So, the product is 0, 0 raised to 1 by 4 which will be equal to 0. If any one observation is 0, here we have one observation which is 0. So, therefore, the geometric mean is also equal to 0. Okay. Now, we shall discuss some uses of geometric mean. The uses of geometric mean are as follows. First thing, it is very useful in finding averages of ratios and percentages. If you need to find out the average ratio or average percentage when you are given some percentages or ratios, then we can use geometric mean to find the average. Arithmetic mean and uh, the other, well, other methods are not suitable. This geometric mean is the most suitable in case of averaging ratios and percentages. Okay. Next, it is also used in finding the average of an index number. It is also used in finding the average of an index number. Okay. In the case of gradual increase or decrease of a given value on over a certain period of time, we use geometric mean. Geometric mean is used in the gradual increase or decrease of a given value over certain period of time. In that, in such case of data also, we can use geometric mean to find the central tendency. Okay. Next, we shall discuss some merits of geometric mean. Okay. First merit is that it is based on all the items of the series and hence uh, no item will be ignored while calculating the geometric mean. Okay. It is clearly and rigidly mathematically defined. Okay. It is rigidly defined by mathematical formula. So, whoever calculates this, unless they make an error, the answer will be same. Okay. Next, it is useful in averaging ratios and percentages and also determining the rates of increase and decrease. We can determine the rates of increase and decrease. These two, these things we have discussed in the uses of geometric mean. That is the main use is averaging ratios and percentages and also determining the rates of increase and decrease of variables. Okay. So, it is also capable of further algebraic treatment. Mathematical study can be further done using geometric mean. Okay. But the calculation is a bit tedious because multiplication of large numbers may become an issue. Okay. So, let us discuss limitations of geometric mean. It is difficult to understand because large number multiplications may cause issues with common people. So, it is difficult to compute the same reason and non-mathematical people cannot do calculations because of the root which is involved, the cube root or the fourth root or the nth root which is involved in the calculation. Okay. So, geometric mean cannot be computed if any item, it, see this is very important, geometric mean cannot be computed if any item in the series is negative or 0. Geometric mean cannot be computed if any item in the series is negative, if it is negative, the geometric mean cannot be defined at all. Second thing is that if any item is, uh, is 0, then the geometric mean will not be an ideal measure because the value itself will become 0. Okay, based on the formula, the value of geometric mean will become 0, which will become meaningless also. So, it is biased for smaller values and give more weight and it gives more weight to small values. Okay, it, it supports smaller values more than the larger values. Okay. Now, let us understand these properties and the definition or the formula using some examples. Let us consider some examples. First example is, let us find the geometric mean of 3, 6 and 12. So, first we need to multiply 3, 6 and 12 and then take the third root. Okay. So, 3, 6 and 12, when you multiply, you get 2, 1, 6, the whole raised to 1 by 3. Correct? That is what I have done here. So, this is 6 cube is to 1, 6. So, 6 raised to 3, the whole raised to 1 by 3. That is what we get. This is your geometric mean. Okay. Next one is a grouped distribution. We have 2 is repeating 2 times. Okay. See so here, I have replicated the whole question in a vertical fashion. We need to multiply or 
to 2 times. 4 is to be multiplied 3 times. 8 is to be multiplied 3 times. 16 is to be multiplied 2 times. Okay, because 2 repeats 2 times, 4 repeats 3 times, 8 repeats 3 times and 16 repeats 2 times. So, each of them has to be multiplied that many number of times first. So, their individual products are given here. Okay. Next, we need to multiply all these individual products. The 2 raised to 2 into 2 raised to 6 into 2 raised to 9 into 2 raised to 8. So, when you multiply all these things, it becomes 2 raised to 2 plus 6 plus 9 plus 8. Okay, we know that when we um, take the product with the same base, the powers are added. Okay, exponents we have studied in exponents chapter powers and exponents that this is what we can do the indices are added okay so we get 2 raised to 25 2 raised to 25 okay this is the product and then then what we do is take the nth root nth root means here how many observations are there here 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 2 how much 3 2 is a 6 7 8 9 10 there are 10 observations so the whole raised to 1 by 10 okay raised to 1 by 10 this is your geometric mean okay the product of observations whole raised to 1 by 10 will give you the geometric mean that is gm is equal to 2 raised to 25 by 10 that is equal to 2 raised to 2.5 this can be taken as 2 raised to 2 into 2 raised to 0 0.5 or 1 by 2. Okay. So, that is equal to 2 raised to 2 is 4 and 2 raised to root that is root of 2. 4 root 2. If you use the calculator, you can find out that it is equal to 5.66. Okay. This is written here also and this is how it is calculated. So, that is all for this topic. We shall move on to the next topic that is harmonic mean in the next video. Thank you.